What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Turf Watch, episode number seven, week eight of the NFL season. It's here. Pittsburgh Steelers back at home going against the Jacksonville Jaguars. In this game, they're two-point underdogs, uh, which has been moving since Thursday. They're originally two-and-a-half-point underdogs, so it's moving in the Steelers' favor. But they have a tough matchup this week against the Jaguars, who are on a four-game winning streak. So today, we're just going to look around, see what people are saying about this matchup, see if the Steelers are getting some respect now that they've been putting together some pretty good performances and off a nice win in week seven against the Rams. I'd say the number one thing making the rounds around Steelers Twitter this week has to be George Pickens saying that the Jaguars have a hope defense. And what are you saying is basically that the defensive line on the Jaguars, bunch of first round, super talented players. And the secondary, uh, there's some question marks, I'd say. Their defense ranks 31st in the league this year in passing yards. Not great, but when you look at the last three weeks, They've had 150 passes thrown against them. So it hasn't been easy, and the stats don't look as good when they've been getting bombarded through the air. So I'm not sure if I agree with this one. Uh, their defense is solid. It's not the best, but they do make splash plays. Um, and I'm kind of concerned with this being a challenge for the wide receivers this weekend. We've got some people here predicting Kenny Pickett's Week 8 stat lines. A lot of people... You know, they weren't happy with Kenny's stats at the beginning of the season. They said he's not throwing enough touchdowns. He's turned the ball over too much, which might be true. But lately, he's been getting it done even without throwing a bunch of touchdowns. So people in the comments, they're seeming pretty optimistic. This guy says 20 for 32, 250 yards and a touchdown. This guy says 273 yards, two touchdowns, one passing, one rushing. And he says zero interceptions. This would be a third straight game without a turnover. Kenny's been looking great lately, especially in the fourth quarter. Uh, I saw some stats that if you combine all his fourth quarter performances the last few weeks, he would be looking like an all-pro type of quarterback. Unfortunately, there haven't been many games this season where the offense has been able to get everything working together, but there's definitely signs that things are moving in the right direction. Now, some concern on the defensive side this week is that there are some cornerbacks banged up. It seemed like JPJ will be playing. Uh, as far as Levi Wallace, it's questionable right now. So with that, Darius Rush and Luke Barku both practiced this week. They both got first-team reps, and they are planning to play against the Jaguars. So a team's uh, secondary that's been struggling this year, bringing in some guys who haven't really seen the field all season, It's there's room to be concerned. The, the Jaguars have some receiving talent. Uh, Trevor Lawrence looking great. This is going to be a tough matchup, especially if they're missing our starting corners this week. Here's an interesting stat about Mike Tomlin as an underdog. He has a 45-40 and 40 all-time record and has the best out of any coach in the past 60 years. Like I said earlier, Steelers are an underdog this weekend. So if you think that Tomlin is, is a better coach or if you think the Steelers win more when they're underdogs, might not be a bad idea to look into that. So this Mac Canada stuff, the fire Mac Canada chants, it happens every week and I'm getting sick of it. I'm tired of these fans who think that they're they're them chanting at a Pat McAfee show or a college game day or a Penguins game is going to change the organization. Um, they've been hearing this stuff for weeks and nothing's changed. So I don't know why it's continuing. It's week eight of the NFL season. The Steelers are four and two and we're still dealing with this nonsense. So I, I'm, I'm honestly sick of this. This guy says, yeah, it's just a meme now. It basically is. I mean, you lose all your respect when you just go out here and say, this person should lose their job. Just This person should lose their job. When you actually have genuine concerns in the future when the Steelers could be struggling, when you're chanting fire so-and-so, it's not going to matter. So I, I just think this is getting way out of control. So this is another thing that's been making the rounds on Steelers Twitter from the Jacksonville side. Trevor Lawrence called terrible towels, little yellow towels this weekend. I don't think this is super disrespectful. I don't. I really don't think he knows that much about the history of the Steelers. So I think if you're offended about this one, you're kind of a clown. That's just my personal opinion. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. But uh, former coach Bill Cowher, he wasn't too happy about it. He said, Trevor Lawrence talked about those little gold towels this week. Little, come on, Trevor. It's called a terrible towel, Cowher said. And you're going to be terrible because this towel is going to make you terrible. That's why it's called a terrible towel. Huh, interesting. Last week on the show, I was looking at the Rams Reddit, and I didn't see any trash talk. 
You got the Jaguars on here. They have a trash talk thread. But I think they're scared of Steelers Nation here. This guy says if I could go, I'd go to Pittsburgh, march right into the stadium, and tell them that I hope it is a spirited game devoid of serious injury and that the Jaguars prevail by a comfortable margin right to their faces. I just think Steeler Nation is just on a different level of fan bases. You aren't getting the same back and forth unless it's a true football city. Jacksonville isn't that. I can't take Jacksonville team seriously. I can't take Los Angeles team seriously. They're fans. I mean, how are you just getting into football when you're living in those types of towns? It's just not the same thing. You get Steelers versus Bills. You get Steelers versus Browns. You get basically any team outside of like huge summary areas. I, I'd even argue that Miami isn't a football town. I respect the Dolphins. I know they got fans all over the country, but it's just not the same. Not the same as a Pittsburgh fan base. Mm, this guy brings up a good point. He said, remember in 2017 when half your total losses that season were from Blake Bortles? Jeez. This guy says, we finally found a team with a dirtier river than the St. John's. I guess that's a river in Jacksonville. Kenny Pickett wants to be Trevor Lawrence when he grows up. Fries do not belong on sandwiches. Wawa is better. Okay. All right. Maybe they are talking some trash out here. This is actually a funny comment here. He says, Noel, Cower, Tomlin, I'll take head coaches that have hung on for too long for 500, Alex. Ridiculous. They wish. Here's a really interesting quote from a radio station down in Jacksonville. A show called Jaguars Today. Here's a dude called Tony Smith. He, he hosts one of the shows. He says, Against Pittsburgh, the Jags have always been on even footing from the beginning of the franchise. Okay, first off, ridiculous. They've won playoff matchups up there. We can go to the list of guys that have had monster games against the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a history of the Jags being successful against the Pittsburgh team. All right, you can say that. You can say that the Jags and their very small history of this franchise, you can say that they've had success against the Steelers, a team that has been more successful than any franchise in any sport in North America. You can say that they've had a couple good wins against them, but you cannot say that they've been on even footing from the beginning of the Jaguars franchise. Uh, it's just That's just foolish to say. The Steelers have been to three Super Bowls. They've won two of them. Bogus. Bogus stuff coming out of Jacksonville this week. And then he goes on to say, when the schedule got announced and you started circling four or five, kind of turning the point, pivot games this season, all of those games were talked about a ton. Pittsburgh, not so much. This one is going to age like spoiled milk. This game is going to be crucial for the AFC playoff seeding. Steelers and Jaguars are going to be fighting for one of those wild card spots. This is a pivotal matchup. Early in the season, tough to tell how pivotal it will be, but uh, to be this foolish in, in looking ahead, it's just ridiculous stuff. He says if the Denver Broncos were 4-2 and you're playing them this week, it would have all the same conditions. He said, here's a team that maybe you need to have a tiebreaker over during the postseason. Maybe they win their division. Who knows? In terms of the actual importance of the game, it's bigger than the San Francisco game because it's a conference game. It's not going to be as big as the next Houston or Titans game coming up. Oh, God. From the worst division in football um, to two of bottom 10 teams in the NFL to say that the Pittsburgh Steelers are not a... It, I am just at a loss for words with this one. This one is insane. You got two teams that are struggling to get above 500, and you want to say that they're more important. No. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy the game on Sunday. And if you see any awful tweets between now and next week's game, make sure you send them to me on Twitter, at Dom Farrow, and I'll make sure to feature them on the show. But for now... Drop your hot takes, drop your predictions in the comment. Maybe we'll feature those too if you're right, or maybe if you're super wrong, we'll address those as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you guys next time.